Um, you had formed a band of your own more than once while in England. Yes. What uh, was what was the direction, the genre, the, the so the vibe so the of first the time I got signed with a pop band, mm -hmm. and uh, we got signed to Universal Records, and started doing a few things with that. Did quite well actually. In the interim, I formed, started writing, or I was already writing songs, and I decided I was going to form a band called Monk and Pure. Monk and Pure was kind of rock, kind of indie. In between I suppose we were more influenced by indie because at the time the killers were breaking like blowing up cars at chiefs um, you know all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. I can't remember all of them Franz Ferdinand and and just massive razor light mm -hmm. that kind of thing and so we were like okay well we can we can continue making what we make with a couple teaspoons of this you know when, when are we talking? Because I remember that. I remember. I feel like it was like, it's like got to be like 2005-ish, 2006-ish, around there. And were they all yeah. from over there? Or I think the Arctic all Monkeys. Of them, were yeah, Arctic them Monkeys. Them? All of them except for the Killers. The Killers are from Vegas, I believe. Okay. Um, and I All from over there, all during that time. And it's the genre that you're trying yeah. to step into. Yeah. Was, did, you, did you feel like uh, it was an advantage because you were in a hotbed? Or did you feel like it was... Mission Impossible because Both. you're up against the big guys. Both. Yeah. Both. It felt very empowering because you knew that there was a chance that you had more more ways of being discovered. Mm -hmm. But it also became so infiltrated with sure. thousands Saturation. of bands doing that. Yeah. And so there were there were positives and negatives to it, you know? Um, anyway, so that band lasts for a few years. Ironically, the pop band, I mean, coincide, coincide, coinciding at the same time, yeah. lands up falling apart and, uh, they decide that, you know, we're going to take a break. The, the, the guy, the producer guy I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> he phones, he's like, look, go home for a little while. Take, take some time off, this and that, this and that. We're going to regroup. So I'm like, okay. So I go back to South Africa. Um, supposed to only be there for a couple of months. Stayed for a couple of years. Really? Yeah. Um, the band had completely disintegrated. Sure. There, there was no coming back from it. So he had let us know. I wasn't going to just jump ship. Please don't get me wrong. He, while I was over there, you know, singer's not coming back. I'm going to go on to the next thing. You're still under contract. But... You know, hang tight. We're going to figure things out. Well, I hung as tight as I could, you know. Sure. <laughs> but I was also bored. So the Monk and Pure band that I'd started, I was like, well, I'm going to just keep it going here. I've got the songs, got a couple albums, this and that, this and that. So gigged with that for a couple of years back in South Africa um, <clears throat> with the intention of always going back to England. By that point, England's home, okay? South Africa's always home, but England's always home too. This is now home. Wherever I lay my hat is home, okay? Sure. And so we gig for a couple of years and with the, the members that are in the band at the time, I'm like, come on, man, we, we, we're doing quite well. Like, it's time. Why don't we all go to England? I said, we're not going to go there and try and fall apart. That's happened. Different, well, one guy who was actually in the Pyramid Tongue with me, um, but I said, we, we know better now. Plus, we've got these albums of work. I've lived there. Like, we can book gigs. We can go do our thing, you know. Yeah, cool. We're going to do that. So we plan. We must have planned for about a year, right? We were going to do it different this time. Sure. We didn't have management this time. We, we were going to go do it all by ourselves. And anyway, I went. The bass player went. The guitarist never went. <laughs> Always somebody. And yeah, so so I mean, look, it's it's all good, you know. Uh, I don't know why he he didn't come. Yeah. Basically, communication stopped. It was very strange. It's a very interesting situation. He was the one that was really spearheading the whole thing. You know, he knew <laughs> he knew that myself and the bass player had gone. Yeah. And he he thought this was a great idea. So we just thought, well, cool. So anyway, we got there, 
And after, after realizing he wasn't going to show up, we're like, well, we got to do something. So we found another guitarist. And we continued gigging as that band for a couple more years. Um, in England. In England. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're now in England full and time. Do me a favor. Is it monk and pure? Is that what you're All saying? All one word. Monk and pure. <coughs> yeah. M M monk and pure. Yeah. M-U-N-K-I-N-P-U-R-E. It's a type of paper, but I spelt it wrong. Oh, okay. It's a type of paper, and I spelt it wrong. So monk and pure as a word doesn't actually exist, but monk and pure as an item does. Gotcha. It's a type of quality paper. My dad was a printer. And so ah, I was looking, okay. I found this thing and I was like, that'd be a cool band name. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, we gig for a couple of years. Again, that whole thing starts to happen. You start to get more people, start to get more people interested, getting a little bit of radio play on some little stations and every bit of exposure helps, right? And um, we sign a management contract. But we weren't fully aware through fault of our own that there were certain clauses in this contract that were just terrible for us to sign. I don't know. And we figured, well, what's the worst that can happen? They blow us up and screw us a bit, but by that point we've blown up. Yeah. Or they don't blow us up and no one makes any money. Some money of some money is still better than no money of no money. That was our outlook, okay? How and old are you at that time? Got to be like, let me think. I want to say like 25, mm -hmm. 26, 27 around here. Okay. And anyway, so shoot forward without going into every absolute detail. We like... The, they, they weren't holding up the stuff, okay? They certain things, depending, it's just like every, any other contract, right? If you say, I'm going to do A, B, and C, I have to do D, E, and F. Right. If I'm doing D, E, and F, and you're not doing A, B, and C, at some point, we have to come to some kind of mutual understanding that we either aren't going to be with you anymore, or you have to do that, or you have to get rid of us. And they weren't quite willing to void the contract but they also weren't willing to start picking up the slack so we were like well we're going to break the band up so three albums and an ep in after working super hard to sort of develop a bit of a following mm -hmm. especially on that live situation i mean england's brutal man listen if you're not doing your thing to the top of your game at least when we were there you weren't getting anyway, okay? And we'd finally got to that point, and then we were told that we weren't allowed to book our own gigs anymore, which I always thought was really interesting. They wanted full control. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, maybe we didn't know. Uh, that sounds like a cop-out. We were too naive to question. So we were like, okay, well, if this is an opportunity for us, if that's what they want, we'll do it. And so a couple of months go by and we're not gigging. And our following started to dwindle. Sure. And so we realize we got one or two choices. We can either stay on the ship as it continues to just slowly sink. Yeah. We can ask for our release, see what happens. They said no. Or we can break the band up. And then that way we're out of this contract. And that's what we did. Good Lord. And so, so <laughs> strategic, we, yeah. strategic suicide. And it was, it was tough. It was tough. We, we broke the band up and it was super ironic because this leads me more to kind of getting current where we almost are. So when I mean, we're talking, this, this happens over periods of years. Okay? Sure. And we're on our last gig. We've booked this small, we call them mini tours over there. There's so many um, counties over there. Mm -hmm. That you can, I suppose, if you look at the states, it would be like the equivalent of kind of touring New Orleans, Slidell, Lafayette, Houston, Austin, come back around Arkansas, 
figure out where you can come back like you did like that kind of tour like these sure. little mini tours right and so we on the last date of that tour and i have an industry friend who's coming to the gig and she brings her partner and on stage i say this is our last gig after this we cease to exist you know and uh thanks everybody for the years of support we will be back with something else we don't know what we don't know when at this point i've been in bands for like i don't even know like 15 years or in so. and out of creating in and out, and, you know and it's and, like it's it's like yeah. what, what, so this, like, is, this is nothing new like again i'm not worried about the financial aspect i'm i've, I've figured that out i know what to do to make money you mm -hmm. know and so so like i'm like i just creatively i think i might need some kind of i got to take a step back you know and so we break the band up and this industry friend of mine her partner comes up to me while i'm watching or packing up i think i'm packing up or maybe there was another band playing i can't remember i might be at the bar going to get a drink i can't remember but at that gig and he says to me he says you're really breaking the band up he'd never seen us play I'm like, yeah, dude, we're done. You know, and he goes, man, I'd really be interested in working with someone like you. So <laughs> I'm like, well, that's great. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's done. And I give him my number, which is interesting because I typically give my number to musicians. Uh -huh. I don't typically give my number out to people I don't really know at gigs. But I happen to give him my number and he starts phoning me almost daily come on man let's get together and talk and i really like you know i respect his partner as an industry person i i, I held her in very high regard which automatically made me hold him in a certain regard but i'm also thinking like i don't know anything about this gentleman you know like i've been on a few of those yeah yeah but he's fine with me come on man let's let's get together let's talk music okay next day a couple of days let's go have dinner I want to talk about the band okay a couple of days let's come come over man i'm gonna play some stuff plays me all this interesting music that he's into and stuff i'm like yeah cool 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 it's like we should do something i'm like we're done dude it's finished you know so he's like well think what was i'm sorry what was this person's role in industry he he <laughs> wanted to manage us okay um so he's like well think about it you know and he was representative of a label or he was an independent man. He was independent, company. but, okay. but um, heavily involved through his partner. Okay. You know? And um, very good friends with some very, very famous people, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean shit, but, but from a... You knew he was somebody to take serious on that account. The type of guy that yeah. could pick up the phone with certain people and go, listen to my guys, you know? Right. So we started to talk about it and we kind of were like, okay, well, what do we do? We've got this album in the can. We haven't released it, you know. We can start a new band from scratch. We take him on board or he takes us on board. We do try to do it his way, you know. We go through the same motions. It took a couple of months to get to the decision, but the long and short of it is we formed this band called Dead days okay our whole mantra was those days are dead because uh, we wanted nothing to do with any of the previous stuff mm -hmm. we really identify our sound try our best to identify our brand we spend a lot of time on this from a creative as uh, aspect you know and uh he comes on board as our manager really nice guy he he helps put some financial backing into the band which is very helpful when you're a young band or I don't mean young in terms of age I mean in terms of how long your band's been together sure you know he helps pay for merchandise he helps pay for videos he helps pay for assets basically and we continue to gig for us for the next um, the next like three years 
we release a live album, we release a studio album, we release an EP. We're actually in the process of finishing in finishing a new studio album. We've been doing it remotely because mm -hmm. they're all in England and I'm here. Um, we will finish it. Fantastic band, in my opinion. Sure. As, uh, I don't mean <coughs> that sound arrogant, but <clears throat> fantastic band. And um, yeah, in the interim, I start to look around at my bandmates, who I love dearly. I mean, I was best man at my guitarist's wedding and my brother played in that band and um, a really cool guy named Ian, he was in that band. I love them all, you know? But I started to look around and, and certain life things were happening. You know, people were buying houses, people were getting, going through divorces, people were starting new jobs, getting married, yeah. those kinds of things. And I was living alone, trying to do the band thing. And I kind of <clears throat> took a step back. I had gone through some personal stuff of my own. And I was like, mm, maybe I need to think a little bit about my actual life. I've spent my whole life thinking about bands. Yeah. Maybe it's time I think about life. And life led me to New Orleans and this is why I'm here. 